At a meeting in the Brussels Press Club, the Swiss ambassador to the European Union, Roberto Balzaretti, spoke on the free movement of persons in Europe, asking whether Switzerland and the United Kingdom face similar issues. We asked the ambassador about the similarities and differences with the UK's renegotiations and forthcoming referendum. Roberto Balzaretti, ambassador of Switzerland to the EU. The, e the UK is about to vote in a referendum on whether or not to remain within the EU. One of the big issues in that debate is migration. I was wondering what, if you could tell us a little bit about the situation in Switzerland on migration, particularly EU migration. Well, we have um, a new situation after the 9th of February 2014. Um, the Swiss have passed an amendment to the Constitution requiring the government to introduce a national system of, of migration. Um, and since we have, uh, you know, 80% of people m migrating into Switzerland being citizens of the European Union, well, this concerns pretty much uh, European citizens. So um, the problem is that this uh, constitutional amendment is not in compliance with the bilateral agreement we have the European Union. And so we need to find a way to bridge the gap uh, between two very different uh, points of the different issues. The one being the constitutional requirement to introduce a system of quotas and the other being the free movement of persons we have approved uh, while signing in 99 the bilateral agreement. That's the issue we have today. And what has been the negative impact of, on Switzerland of failing to meet this requirement of the EU? Well, first of all, uh, we, we are still meeting the requirement. Uh, the, the Constitution gives three years' time to implement uh, uh, national legislation, and we haven't implemented it yet, so the agreement is in place and is in force. Um, but one of the consequences was uh, that the EU refused to conclude new agreements. Another consequence was that we were not be allowed um, to participate uh, uh, in the programs of the European Union, research, education, culture. Uh, and generally speaking, of course, this uh, uh, creates a situation whereby it is difficult, you know, just to continue uh, as if nothing were uh, with, with the European Union. So we, um, we are striving to a, a, a consensual uh, solution of, of this issue in, in the next months, and I, I hope we will, we, will, we will have it. The third consequence, um, and uh, you mentioned it, is precisely the British referendum because the European Union is telling us that uh, before the British referendum, ahead of that, it will not be possible for the European Union to, to have any deal with Switzerland. On the wider migration issues, you are part of Schengen, mm -hmm. and could you say a little bit about how you, what, what, what is your relationship with Schengen? And also, we haven't heard a great deal about Switzerland in this refugee crisis. Can you tell us something about how the Swiss are dealing with, with migrants from countries like Syria and Iraq, Afghanistan? Mm -hmm. um, well, perhaps to start with that, we had less Syrians than other European countries. We, we had mainly uh, people coming from Eritrea, Afghanistan, Somalia, uh, but we have 50,000 last year. Um, you know, we have a population of 8 million persons, 50,000 is the same as having half a million in a population of 80 million. So we were pretty much uh, touched by, by, by this issue. That's the first point. The second is that we are a Schengen Dublin associated member, so we are sitting at the same table with other Schengen Dublin members, um, and we contributed, I think, we tried to, to contribute to a solution uh, to, this, to this issue. Um, we decided to participate in all programs of the, of the European Union, uh, resettlement, relocation program, uh, even we, if we are not obliged to do so, because it is mainly uh, an, an EU issue, uh, because we are convinced that the only way of, uh, of finding a, a, a lasting solution is for all uh, to cooperate. And you perhaps don't hear it as, as much as, as others, you know, um, talk about that uh, concerning Switzerland. Well, mainly I think for two reasons. The first being that uh, when you look at statistics and discussion, the European Union member states are quite uh, centred on, on themselves. They don't think of other countries around like Norway or, or Switzerland. And the second is perhaps, I'm sorry, I will be a little bit arrogant, uh, is that we deal with this issue without any problem. So we, people arrive, they are hosted, they are uh, cared for, uh, you know, they get uh, what, what they need, they have a, 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 a good asylum procedure, and so there is not that a big, big, uh, big discussion about that. 
big concern in the UK is our trade arrangements with the EU. They are still very important and those who want to remain in the EU argue that we must be sitting around that table uh, agreeing on the decisions that affect the single market. Do you feel, ex what is your trade relationship with the EU mm. and do you feel excluded from those decisions and is that damaging to you as, an, as a country? Well, we choose after the Swiss uh, rejected a multilateral agreement, it was the European Economic Area Agreement in 92, we choose to conclude sectoral agreements with the European Union. And the European Union agreed because, uh, you know, we are an important economic partner of the Union. So today our relations are based on this sectoral agreement. You have uh, you know, transportation, uh, um, public procurements, uh, and, and, and so on. They are important, of course. Um, they are uh, very important even in certain branches and we would have problems, uh, you know, not having those agreements. But the situation is different if you take a multilateral framework like the EEA, where Norway and, and, and Iceland and Liechtenstein are, and it's even different if you have full, full membership. Now, um, we know that these agreements are not the same as being a full member. We, we knew it from the beginning, and so we, we, we arranged, you know, procedures and systems so that we can live with that. For a member state uh, to abandon the co-decision and having something else, well, that's, that's another issue and that's a decision that the British people um, must, must take for themselves. People in the UK say they want their sovereignty back. You have sovereignty, you would argue, but in adopt, having to adopt this legislation, have you actually really got sovereignty over the laws in your country? Well, the, the, um, the jure, so legally, of course, because we are not supposed to do anything we don't like to. But if in a given bilateral agreement, well, the system works only if you change your legislation in order to keep track of the legislation changements within the European Union, or you don't have an agreement anymore. So the sovereignty is a formal one, it's not probably a complete real one. And once you are in, well, of course you um, concede a part of your sovereignty to a supranational entity, but if you have a co-decision, then you are exercising your sovereignty there. Uh, it's a very difficult uh, discussion, you know. The, the, my point is that uh, we have a well-working system we should preserve and develop, uh, and that's my concern. One last question. Another issue of great importance to the UK is financial services. Mm -hmm. Likewise, a, a very big sector for mm -hmm. the Swiss economy. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned about how the capital markets union will be developing over the next few years? Um, well, our concern is not to have um, um, an equal access uh, to a large market, large European market than all other competitors we have um, around Europe. That's, that's the concern. Um, if the capital market union uh, you know, is implemented properly and it's a kind of level playing field for all of us, then well, we, we will have to, to, to live um, with this new situation. What's important uh, to Switzerland is to have access to the market, well, like others have access to the Swiss market. And there the, the discussion is open. Uh, whether we can have, uh, you know, ad hoc access uh, depending on on, um, on the different um, uh, issues you have uh, in the market, of, or if we can one day conclude a, um, a bilateral agreement on financial services, the discussion is not uh, is not done yet. So we, we will have uh, wait and see.